we look at section 4.6 here, we're going to look at using congruent triangles. We're going to build on the ideas that we've already been discussing, um, using our shortcuts, SSS, SAS, ASA, AAS, and HL, uh, and just looking at how we can use these things to prove different ideas. Okay, so... Um, Again, I, I just told you we, we have our five methods, okay? Our five methods are SSS, SAS, ASA, AAS, and hypotenuse leg. Um, and again, this is the big idea, okay? CP, um, CTC, what we're going to say is instead of saying that, okay, just to simplify, we're just going to say CPCF, okay? Corresponding parts of... I'm sorry, CPCF, um, corresponding parts of congruent figures. Okay, so if two triangles are congruent, then it makes sense to us, hopefully, that all of their con uh, corresponding parts are also congruent. Uh, and we're going to look at a few proofs um, as to how to use this. So um, our task here in the first example is to prove that RT is congruent to LN. Okay, and so without writing a formal proof, the process is very simply first prove that your triangles are congruent. So right here we can see that triangle STR is congruent to triangle uh, MLN. All right, um, and those are congruent because of angle angle side. And because those are congruent, now we can say the very next step of our proof would be, okay, so RT is congruent to LN, and the reason would be CPCF, corresponding parts of congruent figures. All right, part B, no different. Um, we're going to prove first that triangle CED is congruent to triangle uh, FGH. And again, we know that because of the angle side angle shortcut. Once I know that, now I can say angle D and angle H are congruent because of CPCF. Uh, and in reality, we really, in this particular proof, did not have to do all that because um, we saw a theorem earlier that says if two angles are congruent, then the third ones have to be third angles congruence theorem. Um, but if we want to use CPCF, that would be uh, kind of the process there. We want to prove that angle STV is congruent to UTV. So in other words, these two angles here are congruent. Again, first, prove your triangles are congruent. SVT is congruent to UVT. And we know that because of SSS. Again, we have the reflexive property here. And then once we, once we identify that, now we can say the angles are congruent CPCF. So I'm not going to beat a dead horse here and keep going through all these examples. They're all the same. Um, long story short, you're going to prove triangles are congruent and then use CPCF. Okay, so as far as um, this proof, obviously, uh, it's just fill in the blank. So um, reason number one, always given. All right, so now I'm going to kind of work from there. So um, I know that uh, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, so I'm just going to go ahead and mark my diagram. Angle 1 and 2 are congruent. Um, AB is congruent to DE. Our task is to prove, I'm going to put this in blue, we got to prove that DC and AC are congruent. So DC and AC. So that's what we're trying to prove. So the first one, we have to use congruent supplements theorem. So when I look at the diagram, it's pretty clear to me that um, angle 3 has to be congruent to angle 4 because of the congruent supplements theorem. Um, that, that might be a little bit sloppy. We probably are skipping a couple steps there. But uh, at the end of the day, as long as you see big picture and you can recognize that 3 and 4 have to be congruent, uh, that's the main idea. Okay, so these two guys are congruent. Uh, I also see vertical angles. I see that angle ACB has to be congruent to angle uh, DCE. Vertical angles congruence theorem. And so now once I have that information, now I know my triangles are congruent. So triangle CDE, and it doesn't really matter how you name these as long as you're keeping your corresponding parts lined up. So CDE is congruent to CAB. And the reason for that is angle angle side. And then finally, once I've proved the triangles are congruent, that means that uh, side DC has to be congruent to side AC, because they are corresponding parts of congruent figures, CPCF. All right, so the next proof, uh, four-step proof here, uh, reason number one, always given. Obviously, I'm not always going to give you the fact that there's four steps. Most of the time, you're going to have to kind of write your own. Um, but if I do give you that, then, then obviously just, just use the template. So uh, I'm going to mark the diagram first. So SPT 
is congruent to RQT. And I also know that PSR is congruent to QRS. And my task is to prove that PR, again, I'm going to do this in, let's do it in green, PR uh, is congruent to QS. All right, so the two triangles I'm seeing that i got to prove are congruent are this guy and this one. Okay, it's kind of hard to tell. There's a lot of triangles going on in that diagram, but those are the two big ones I'm looking at. So when I look at those diagrams, um, I immediately see that RS is congruent to RS. They're sharing that side, and that's the reflexive property. And so once I know that, now it's enough information to say that triangle um, PSR is congruent to triangle. Make sure your corresponding pieces line up. So if I said PSR, I got to say QRS. And that's because of uh, angle, angle, side. And then finally, I can say now that PR is congruent to QS because they are corresponding parts of congruent figures. So again, in this chapter, or in this particular section, it's all about proof triangles are congruent, then use CPCF. So we're just going one step further than what we've been doing. So uh, we know that B is the midpoint of segment, um, B is the midpoint of segment EB. That doesn't make sense. AE. Angle D is congruent to angle C. Uh, and we got to prove that DB is congruent to CB. So reason number one is given. All right, and so start using your given information. If B is the midpoint of AE, uh, then that means that AB is congruent to EB. Definition of midpoint. So we've proven this already. Now, um, vertical angles are pretty apparent. So angle ABD is congruent to angle EBC. Vertical angles congruence theorem. So now that's enough information. Now I can go ahead and say that the triangles are congruent. So triangle ABD is congruent to triangle EBC. And again, that's angle, angle, side again. And finally, step five, DB is congruent to CB, CP, CF. Um, so again, just we're going to be proving a lot of different things. We're going to be proving that segments and angles are congruent. And in order to do so, we're going to prove triangles are congruent first and then use CPCF. So we'll look at some more proofs in class and uh, clarify any misconceptions that you might have.